and it's not at all about bone marrow. <laughs> what is it about? <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? Okay. <clears throat> And we're back, and we're taking your tweets and talking about bone marrow. So you could tweet us. Well, hurry up, because we're, we're doing tweets now. Okay. Uh, Staten F says, This is going to be the most disastrous episode of John Wants Answers ever. John Wants Answer ever. Um, no, I think this is the first time we are doing a topic that can save lives. <laughs> You know, we have a lot of fun on this show, normally, but tonight, we have to look inside ourselves <laughs> and ask, you know, we, we often say we want to be a hero and save someone's life. But we're just waiting for the opportunity. This is that opportunity. And for example, here's Brian and Sadiq. They are being heroes. They are filling out the forms now for the registry. Um, have you guys gotten to the swabbing part yet? Okay, wave your hands when you're ready, because we want to catch this for prosperity on the internet. <laughs> okay, we've taken our tweets, and we have anything new since then? Wow, no tweets. Okay. All right, so let's get back to bone marrow. Does blood type or ethnicity matter? I think you alluded to this earlier. Yeah. Um, the ethnicity definitely matters, and the thing I really want to talk about is that there are now approximately 10 million people in the National Marrow Donor Program Registry. Around 7 million of them are Caucasian, which means every other ethnic minority group and people who are biracial or, or mixed you know, ethnicities of more than two all fall into that other 30% category. So if you're told by your doctor you need a bone marrow transplant and you're Caucasian, you have a much better chance of finding a match in the registry than someone who is of a different ethnicity or a mm. mixed ethnicity. And so because of that, you'll see there's donor programs like the Asian American Donor Program and other ethnic specific um, recruitment groups who will try to do recruitment within different ethnic communities to help raise their presence in the donor program. So is the donor program filled with enough white people and Caucasians? Actually, no. Ed, that's one of the things, um, when I'm reading things online, like when I'm on Facebook or reading news articles about the Merrill Registry, a lot of times I'll see people leaving comments, you know, say, oh, well, I'm not of the same ethnicity as the person who's doing this, you know, donor drive effort, so I guess I can't help. And I'll always like go in and leave a comment and say, yes, you can help because there is a very small chance you may still be this person's match. And even if you're not their match, you may be able to help somebody else in need. Mm -hmm. So how can people join the registry? In the United States, uh, if you go online, you have two options. You can either order a home test kit, which is what Brian and Sudeep are filling out tonight, mm -hmm. or you can... Um, use a zip code locator on the website and you just type in your zip code and the Be The Match website will list for you all the donor drives happening in your local area. So you can just walk in and fill in the registration form and do the cheek swabbing. When you get the home kit, they mail it to you. You fill it out, do the swabbing and mail it back. And not every country has that option. Some you have to go in physically. Some countries don't even have donor um, drives remotely. They have donor centers. So it's like you go to a hospital and, and that's where you can register. Mm. Is there an international registry? There is an international registry. There's actually over 70 registries worldwide, but 35 of those registries are part of what is called the cooperative registry. So if you, um, you know, live in California and you need a, a transplant and your match is found in one of these other countries, then, sorry, <laughs> were you going to go there? I think they're ready to be swabbing. Is that right? Okay, we'll come back to this. All right. 
So Brian and Sadeep are ready to swab. Let's uh, take a look at them swabbing. Do you know how to do this? We're going to figure it out. Okay. We read the instructions. The instructions are there. The instructions are clear. <laughs> There's Sadeep. He's uh, swabbing his cheek there. Has some good back and forth action going. Collecting all those cells. All right, uh, and there's Brian. <laughs> Look at that. Did you feel any discomfort? No, no discomfort. Was there a bad taste left in your mouth? No. Do you think of emotionally scarred? No. no. So this was totally safe and not at all bothered you. Easy. Easy. Easy, Easy is what Brian says. Look at that. All you people at home. They just swabbed their mouth. And now they could be the one to save someone's life. Stacy. So back to me. You were saying. <laughs> so I was saying, if a patient lives here in the United States, but their match is found in one of these countries, these are the 34 countries that have a cooperative registry, they will collect the bone marrow or stem cells there, fly it to the United States, and the patient here can receive a transplant. Mm. And we do the same. If an American you know, has the matching marrow for a patient in another country, uh, they'll fly it there. So actually over 50% of the matches that are made now are called international matches, where the donor and the patient live in different countries. Oh, so I don't have to register more than once. No, once you join, once. You're, you'll be in um, that registry. Some countries will have more than one registry, but only one is part of the cooperative registry. So they can go on the Be The Match website, and there's a link there. There's also links on the uh, Marrow Drive site that I maintain that show where all these different donor programs are and which ones are the cooperative mm -hmm. registries. So how is a transplant made? Let's say I, I become a match for someone else. Right. How do I give my transplant. So what will happen is you will be contacted through the donor program and they'll ask if you still are willing to give and mm -hmm. surprisingly in the US 50 percent of the time when people are told they're a match for a patient in need they will decline to donate oh, meaning that's, that's they either choose not to donate for whatever reason or they're willing to donate but then as they go through more medical testing it's found that they have a health condition that mm -hmm. precludes them from being able to, even though they're willing. Okay. Um, so if you pass those first hurdles, then you'll do more extensive testing at a local hospital near you. And if you turn out to be the patient's best match, then the doctor will let you know, you know, we either need a PBSC donation or we need a bone marrow donation. And at that point, um, you'll donate whichever way the doctors instruct you to. Sorry to interrupt, we have a, a late breaking tweet. <laughs> Blizz Blamage, I have no idea who this is. I am enjoying the information on bone marrow. I do not know all of this. Great show. Well, there you go. Awesome. This is not a disaster, as our previous tweeter suspected. <laughs> How will you know if a transplant is successful? Um, oh, well, I didn't finish answering your other question, oh, I'm actually. Sorry. <laughs> and so, So, so once, once the donation is given and the stem cells or marrow are sent to the transplant hospital where the patient is, the way they receive the marrow is through a central line or a catheter. So it isn't a surgical procedure. They usually already have, you know, um, the central line or catheter implanted in their body because they're constantly having to receive medications and have blood drawn. So rather than stick them with needles every time, mm -hmm. it's just a permanent tubing that's basically been put in their body. So it goes into their body just like a blood transfusion would. So it's in a plastic bag and it hangs on a stand and it comes down the tube and goes straight in. The stem cells will mix with their blood and then they just naturally go to and seek the bones and they will settle into the bones and at that point, to answer your next question, um, that stage is called engraftment. And that's where the bone marrow has now absorbed the donated stem cells. And if it engrafts properly, it will then begin to produce healthy blood cells again mm. for the patient. 
why should people register now instead of waiting until someone they know is sick? Well, I tell people this all the time. Um, to me, it's really important because people don't understand that when you are told someone you love needs a bone marrow transplant, the first thing you want to do, of course, is help them. And you want to help them as quickly as possible to find out if you're a match. But the way the, the kits work, um, the kits like this, when they get mailed to you, is, you know, you order it if you order it through the mail. So you have to wait for it to get there. Then you fill it out and then you mail it back. Or you have to wait for a drive and, you know, go to a live drive. And then once this kit is sent back to the registry, it can take weeks, even a few months sometimes, for that kit to be processed and put into the registry database. So here you are wondering, am I a match for this person I love and care about? And instead of knowing immediately, because you're already in the database, now you have to wait, you know, six weeks, eight weeks, or, or ten weeks to even have your information put into the system. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of testing has to be done to see even if you are a preliminary match, if, you know, you are in fact the match. And it's really important because the success of the transplant is partly dictated by the earlier a patient can receive a transplant when they have the disease, the more successful the transplant is going to be. If the disease is allowed to progress, because some patients have to wait months or years to find a match if they ever find one at all. So, you know, obviously having to wait a year to find a match is not a good thing. So mm -hmm. being in the registry now means if you ever hear of someone who needs a transplant, you'll know that they are, their doctors already have access to your records. Hmm. All right, and one more question. Um, how old could I be rejected to for the donor registry? There are two basic reasons, just to be really general. One is age. In the United States, you have to be at least 18 years old, mm -hmm. but not over 60 years old uh -huh. to donate. Um, different countries have different age limits, so some it might be like 17 years to 55 years or to even um, 50 years old. So age is one. And then the other is there are medical reasons. And that can mean that you either have a medical condition or... I'm being told it's time to wrap up. Good shooting. You either have a medical condition <coughs> or you may be receiving treatment for a medical condition that precludes you. Okay. From well, thank you, Stacey, for coming on the You're show. Um, and thanks, Brian and Sadiq, for helping save a life, hopefully. Our next show is April 12th. So I hope to see you then. All right. Good show.